Please like the video. In this edition, what we learned from the midterm primaries, what's showing up in campaign ads since Labor Day, and questions and answers with some of the people we've been checking in with on the trail. This is the final edition of the trailer. We've been delivering campaign news from across the country for four full years, a whole presidential term. And hope that you enjoyed it as much as we did. We couldn't have done it without the sharp editing of Terry Rupar, Kathy Decker, Vanessa Williams and Sean Sullivan. Thank you for reading, and au revoir. We'll see you again. To stay up to date on politics, the midterms and 2024, sign up for the 5-Minute Fix, a newsletter from The Washington Post's Amber Phillips. Primary season is over. The general election tickets are set. And the voters who picked this year's candidates set up dozens of competitive races, many in congressional districts brand new for the cycle, and a few probably harder for Republicans than they needed to be. Our colleagues at the Washington Post will cover every angle of this election from here. But what did the primaries end up telling us? Five big things. Democrats mostly got the candidates they wanted in swing seat races. There were setbacks, like an ill-fated investment in a crypto-backed newcomer in Oregon. There were controversies, especially when Democratic committees spent to get far-right, stopped the steel-minded Republicans through their primaries, viewing them as easier to defeat in November. But in the big picture, Democrats headed toward the midterms with the candidates favored by the national party leadership. The one notable exception, Rep. Kurt Schrader, Democrat Oregon, who was abandoned by local Democratic parties before he lost to challenger Jamie McLeod Skinner. But National Democrats ignored his race, and the main party committees, entering the cycle after scrapping a blacklist against consultants who worked with challengers, stayed out of primaries as other groups got to meddling. It was the same story in Senate races, where the closest anything got to a fracas was the primary in Pennsylvania. Lt. Gov. John Fetterman got in early, held a lead in public polls, and never gave it up, though early polling for Rep. Connor Lamb, D., showed a potentially close contest. If there was ever a race for Republicans or outside groups to interfere in and weaken the eventual nominee, that was it, the collective PAC, which supports black candidates, hit Fetterman out of the gate with an ad by focused on an incident when, with a shotgun in hand, he stopped an unarmed black jogger. But the electability-focused Democratic electorate was convinced that Fetterman's unique profile would be an asset, and even some middling debate performances didn't stop him from sweeping every county in the May primary. In Wisconsin, where rivals to Lt. Gov. Mandela Barnes, D., spent millions portraying themselves as more electable, every credible challenger folded up his or her campaign before the primary. The same thing happened in North Carolina and Florida, minus the wasted millions, North Carolina State Senator Jeff Jackson quit his race and ran for a House seat, while Rep. Stephanie Murphy, Democrat Florida, opted not to challenge Rep. Val Demings, Democrat Florida. There was more competition in the races for state office, with primaries in Hawaii, Oregon and Florida that got rough in the final weeks. But in federal races, even when enthusiasm about the Biden administration was lowest, Democrats were largely able to avoid pricey challenges and pile up money for November. Republicans wanted a diverse candidate class, and they got it. Whether they win control of the House, Republicans have a candidate roster with more racial and gender diversity than ever. That's the fruit of a multi-year, multi-pack effort to change who wins nominations, including a recruiting effort by party leaders and interventions from members like Rep. Elise Stefanik, Republican New York, who closed out primary season with a boost for New Hampshire conservative Caroline Levitt last week. In the 74 seats targeted by the National Republican Congressional Committee, ranging from newly gerrymandered Trump districts to places President Biden won by 20 points, 25 of the party's nominees are not white men. In Texas, Wesley Hunt is all but certain to become the state's first black Republican congressman, 
in Michigan, John James could add to the ranks of black Republicans in the House, while the state sends no black Democrats to Washington at all.